it's never easy to replace a franchise goaltender. In 1998, the Vancouver Canucks traded their goaltender of 10 years, Captain Kirk McLean, and began a winding journey that took the team through some of the darkest days in franchise history. Let's take a look back at every goalie the Canucks had in their eight year long struggle to replace Kirk McLean. This is the Goalie Graveyard. The dawn of the 1997-98 season was a strange time for the Vancouver Canucks. Gone were the days of the flying skate, and in were the days of the Orca. Since their epic run to the finals in 94, the Canucks remained competitive but were clearly on the downswing. Although pieces were taken away, the core of Linden, Bure, and McLean were all still there, strengthened by the original Alexander the Great, along with newcomers Marcus Naslin and Matthias Olin. This team looked like a team that could possibly do things, except there was one small problem. During the offseason, the Canucks did the unthinkable and signed Satan himself. The team started the season with the goalie tandem of Kirk McLean and Artis Irby. McLean was the anchor of Vancouver's crease for the previous nine seasons while Irby came in from Dallas, a good backup that could carry the load should McLean get hurt. So this was the tandem, McLean and Irby. And these two men proceeded to get shelled for the next three months. Vancouver went 11, 23 and 6 in their first 40 games, costing coach Tom Rennie and GM Pat Quinn their jobs. Enter Super Satan! Mike Keenan takes over as both coach and GM and destroys the Canucks from the inside. The first victim of the goalie graveyard? Kirk McLean himself. Him and Marty Jelena get shipped to Carolina for Sean Burke and Jeff Sanderson. McLean spends his final years in the league with Carolina and Florida, tried to come back to Vancouver as a free agent, was denied, and retired as a Ranger. Marty Jelena, you ask? Ah, the Canucks never regretted that. The Canucks rode the Burke-Irby tandem for a couple months before shipping Burke to the Flyers for Garth Snow. The Canucks finished the season with a 25-43-14 record. Artis Irby led the team with 14 wins and a goals against average of 2.73. For reference, Ed Belfour and Marty Brodeur both had goals against averages under 2 that season. After not re-signing Irby in the offseason, the Canucks went with Garth Snow and Corey Hirsch, with Kevin Weeks joining the team in the infamous Pavel Bure trade. Garth Snow got 20 of Vancouver's 23 wins that season, placing them dead last in the National Hockey League. That season, the Canucks waived Corey Hirsch, who was first brought to Vancouver to back up McLean back in 95. 1999-2000 is where things start to get gruesome. Garth Snow once again took the number one spot, with Kevin Weeks filling in as the backup. That is, until Snow broke his finger. Weeks stepped in as the starter until he quote-unquote tweaked his knee. When the MRI showed no damage to his knee, coach Mark Crawford ripped him to shreds and he was promptly shipped to the Islanders for Felix the Cat. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out, Kevin! Felix Potvin went on to win a team-high 12 games that season as the Canucks finished 30, 29, 15, and 8. Then, Vancouver told Garth Snow to hit the road as he signed with Pittsburgh in the offseason as the Canucks elect to take Bob Asenza in free agency. For the 2000-2001 season, the Canucks rode the Felix the Cat and backup Bob Asenza tandem with Asenza often outplaying Potvin. In another attempt to find a number one goalie, the Canucks sent Adrian Acoin to Tampa Bay in exchange for... Dan Cloutier? Lord help us all! Oh yeah, Felix the Cat can go run away to Los Angeles. Asenza gets 18 of Vancouver's 36 wins as Vancouver finally makes the playoffs again, only to get stomped out by Colorado. Asenza runs off to Buffalo and plays one season for the Sabres before retiring. Sad to see a goalie we actually like leave. 2001-2002 was the Dan Cloutier show, as Vancouver finally got some stability in net. Cloutier won 31 of his 62 games played, while free agent signing Peter Scudra handled the rest of the load. This stability would all go down the drain in Game 3 of the Canucks' first round series against the Red Wings. On this night, Lindstrom firing and it scores! What the and fuck Lindstrom were they thinking? Beating Cloutier with a low- 0203 is the best season of the famed West Coast Express era with Cloutier again carrying the brunt of the games, playing in 57, while Scudra and newcomer Alex Ald covered the extras. Near the end of the season, Coach Crawford decided that he hates Scudra's guts and goes with Ald as the backup for the playoffs. For the first time since 1995, the Canucks win a playoff series when they bounce the Blues, only for Cloutier to fall apart in round two. Minnesota overcomes a 3-1 series lead and fans in Vancouver spend the entire summer wondering how they lost to an expansion team, and Peter Scudra is exiled to Russia. Prior to the 03-04 season, the Canucks acquired Johan Hedberg from the Penguins. Hedberg played in 16 games while Ald played in 6 and Kluche played in 60, carrying the weight of the load again. 
Kluche won 33 of Vancouver's 43 wins before getting hurt in Game 3 of the opening round series against the Flames. Ald plays well enough in relief, but the Canucks eventually lose in Game 7 when... <sighs> Marty Jelena scores in overtime for the Calgary Flames. Following the lockout in 2005, the Canucks were strong in 2005-2006 until the injury bug took a hold. It started with Dan Cloutier, who was hurt in the November 20th game against the Ducks, and never played a game as a Canuck again! Woo! Leaving Alex Ald to carry the load, playing 67 games, winning 33 of them, and Cloutier winning 8 before injury. Maxime Ouellette, Mika Noronen, and Rob McVicker played less than 10 games combined as they all served as backups for all throughout the season. Despite the team finishing with 92 points, the Canucks missed the playoffs. And then it happened. On June 24th, 2006, the Vancouver Canucks traded Todd Bertuzzi, Brian Allen, and Alex Ald to the Florida Panthers in exchange for Lucas Krychek and Roberto Luongo. In his first season with the Canucks, Luongo played 76 games, winning 47 of them and posted a 2.28 goals against average, shattering numerous Canucks records and finally giving Vancouver stability between the pipes. From the time that Kirk McLean was traded until Roberto Luongo was acquired from Florida, the Vancouver Canucks went through 14 goalies in 8 years, with Dan Cloutier being the only true mainstay. Luongo went on to have a great career in Vancouver, winning a Jennings Trophy, four division titles, two President's Trophies, and a trip to the Stanley Cup Final where he was the only one on his team who ever seemed to show up. The acquisition of Roberto Luongo ended eight years of frustration for the Vancouver Canucks and led them into the most successful period in franchise history. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the Vancouver Canucks goalie graveyard.